Welcome back Morales to this video in which I'm gonna show you how to display the Aptos NFTs using the Morales API. We're gonna create this beautiful dApp displaying each and every NFT using the Web3 UIKit repository which has beautiful components such as these card components right here. We can see I'm displaying the image of the NFT, the title, the description and look how clean this looks. Guys, this is very simple and it will, it will cut down your development time by so much. Now we're going to use the Morales API to fetch these NFTs. We will need an API key, so make sure you sign up to morales.io to get that API key. If you want to take your dApps to the next level, make sure you upgrade your account to Pro Plan or Business Plan. Now, the endpoint we're going to use is to get NFTs by creators. So we're putting a wallet address and we're getting the NFTs that this address has created. That's what we're doing right here. We're going to do that for two specific uh, networks. We're going to do it for the mainnet, which is what we can see right here. But we're also going to do it for the testnet. But even more, we're going to create the NFT for the testnet and then we're going to display it. It's going to look something like this. Right here, we have uh, the image that this is Alice's collection and this is Alice's simple token. This is made with Aptos and then we're using the Morales uh, Aptos specific Web3 API to get these NFTs. I hope this sounds interesting. So stay tuned. I will show you how to do it. Hey, I'm Joseph, your Web3 instructor from Sweden. I've been into crypto since 2017 and have been building in the space since 2021. In my free time, I enjoy playing paddle, going to the gym or hanging out with my dog. I always try to enjoy some good pancakes, but that's for another time. Now let's get back to the video. All right, let's get started inside the Aptos documentation with the Mint NFTs with the SDKs. Uh, that's what we're gonna do today i've already set up the environment so make sure you do the first step right here and then we can go ahead and clone this repo so let's copy that and inside the terminal let me actually zoom in here a few steps like so let's create a directory called mint nfts with sdks and let's go into that one so and here is where i'm gonna clone this so let's remove this last part because we don't want to clone this repo in the root we can see right here we got the app to score folder that's perfect that's what we wanted then we want to cd into it so let's copy this and i'm gonna remove this part right here like so and we're gonna cd into this typescript folder right here and then we want to install the dependencies so let's run npm i for installing those and once it's done we're gonna run the simple nft file but before we do that let's open this up inside visual studio code like this and let's go to comment.ts file and we're gonna want to change these two right here the devnet we're gonna change it to testnet instead hit save and then we want to do this step right here so let's go back to the terminal and hit npm run simple underscore nft i think that's what it's called yes let's run that and see what's happening this is the output that we got and you can see we have alice and bob two wallet addresses we can copy alice wallet address because that's the one that created this nft and then it got transferred to bob and we can see the data right here um which collection it is the description the name we can see uh, the link, the URI link right here, which is also the one that we're gonna display later on. Now let's open Aptos Explorer and make sure we are on testnet right here. Let's paste Alice wallet address in there and we can see some transactions. We have created the NFT right here. So we can actually go into that one and, set, and then inside events and we can see that this is the wallet address that created it, which is Alice's wallet address. Great. So inside Morales.io, we have this get NFTs by creators endpoint uh, that's below Aptos and NFT API. And this right here is for the mainnet. So you can use this and we are going to use this for the mainnet uh, part. But now we have the testnet first. So, so let me show you how it, that's going to work before we take a look at the code. So we're going to make this work as we want. 
while pasting the wallet address in there and hit submit we get the nft that we just minted on aptos network that's pretty cool guys i'm gonna show you how to build this so let's jump straight into visual studio code all right so let's create the application so we're gonna need the back end for getting the data of the nfts and also a front end to display them beautifully and also have the input fields so make sure you create the root folder i've called my get aptos nft by creators and then let's start with the back end folder and inside index.js we're gonna need to install a few dependencies we're gonna use express node fetch and cores then we're gonna have our server running on port 5001 and we will also need to have our morales api key right here because we're gonna need that to do the fetches so if you don't have one already make sure you go and sign up at morales.io to get your api key and paste that in then we're gonna need two endpoints one is the slash get testnet and the second one the slash get mainnet because we have two input fields when you I use the first one we're gonna do a request towards this endpoint and when you use the second one it's gonna be towards this endpoint but let's start with get testnet and once we hit this endpoint we're gonna do a request to the testnet aptos api that morales provides us and we're gonna pass along the creator address that we got from the frontend client once we get the response back uh, we're just gonna parse it and send it back to the frontend client and we're gonna do the same on this endpoint but for this it's gonna be towards the mainnet aptos api morales endpoint again we're gonna pass along the creator's address and then send the response as it is finally we're listening to our server which means our backend is up and running let's head over to the frontend folder which is a next.js application and we have installed axios and web3 uikit slash core dependency because we want to create those code card components our pages uh, files are pretty clean we have the index.js which only renders the main component so let's jump straight into that one and in here you can see that there's a lot of things going on let's start at the bottom where we render everything and we can see that we have the logo section first we have the morales and the aptos logo right here and then we have the first um, input field right here and then we have the second one right here and lastly we're rendering the card component itself so we're gonna go through this uh, later but let's start with the first one so basically these two are the same um, the only thing that's different is which function we call when we hit the submit button basically but they both have an on change handler so let's take a look at that one first first which is right here and we can see that when we type inside the input field no matter which input field we uh, type in we're gonna run this function and then we're gonna take the value of that input field and just set the state so we can use this later on and send it to the um backing client right here as a parameter basically now let's go through the submit buttons and let's start with the handle testnet which eventually takes that value first of all we're emptying the input field right here and then we take this value that we stored above and we're sending it right here as a parameter when we do a get request using axios to our um, backend server on port 5001 and slash get testnet because this is for the testnet guys and once we get the response back we're just setting the state right here and we're also setting the set show results to true which uh, in the beginning it's false because we don't want to show the card components when we don't have the data and let's also go through the second submit button which is for the mainnet right here which eventually does exactly the same but this is for the slash get mainnet endpoint and we're setting the same parameter we're getting the data and storing it the same way on this in this variable and then we also set the show results to true and that's about it once this is set to true we're gonna render this co card component right here so we can see if this is true we want to map through the result array uh, which was the one that we set the value uh this value right here from the backend server so you can see on the top right here it's an array so we map through that and we get we render a card component for each and every value inside that array we're passing along um these props the nft data but now let's jump into this card component right here and we can see that we get the props right here from the main component and the first thing we want to do is to see if our metadata URI includes ipfs because depending on how the creator set this up it might include ipfs and it might not for example let's take a look at the nft we created we the URI doesn't include ipfs so we can just paste this in inside the image element to display this 
uh, this image of the NFT, but sometimes we need to do some changes. So for example, if it includes IPFS, we're gonna split uh, that value that's included in the metadata URI on the IPFS colon slash slash, and we're gonna take the, the first uh, index. So, so we're not gonna take this part, we're gonna take everything that comes after this split, and we're gonna add it to this uh, URI right here. This is gonna give us the link that essentially is gonna do the same as this link right here does and display our NFT image. We're gonna set this value to it and then we're gonna use that to do an access request towards this specific link. When we get the response back, we might have some extra forward slashes. So let's remove those and replace them with uh, just an empty string basically. So then our URI link is complete and we're setting the, the state variable to it and then we can use it further down which we do right here. So first we check if this is true and it isn't from the beginning, it's false, but then we set it to true right here. So if this is true, then we're gonna display this NFT image, which we got from uh, this calculation right here. And if this isn't true, then we're just gonna display the metadata URI because that means it doesn't include the IPFS into it. And this is within the image element. Then we can use this card component that we got from this Web3 UI kit core right here and we're gonna pass along the title the description if it doesn't have a description we're gonna add the name instead and we're gonna display it beautifully adding some styling to it uh, i'm not gonna jump straight into the styling for this video but i will post the github repo in, in the description below so make sure you take a look at that one otherwise this is it this is the only code we need to build this and to create this beautiful dab so if we go back here and paste the creator's address of the Aptos monkeys, we can see how beautiful they show up right here. And this is it, guys. I hope you enjoyed this quick video, building this beautiful dApp and using these card components to make it look really, really awesome. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you smash the like button, guys, and also leave a comment below so I know you appreciate this or if you want to see more Aptos videos from us. Otherwise, I hope you will have a great day.